Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Travis. And I'm Andrew. And this is Sports Fan Network. Well, if you haven't heard by now, there is big news in the NBA over the past week. You know, two of the t top Eastern powerhouses in the NBA made a really big trade. You know, Kyrie Irving is officially going to Boston. And in return, Cleveland's going to get Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Ante Zizek, a 2018 first-round pick, which is owed to the Brooklyn Nets. So it's honestly going to probably be, like, at least top five. So it's a really good pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And they also ended up getting a 2020 second-round pick from them because of Isaiah Thomas's hip injury. Andrew, what's your thoughts on this trade? Well, obviously, this is huge for both teams, obviously sending – a clear message that the Cavaliers want to obviously stay as a contender now for LeBron James, but they're also thinking about LeBron James after the fact that he might leave after this season. So they get that, getting that Brooklyn pick is obviously huge for Cleveland to kind of maybe restart that rebuilding process if LeBron leaves, but it also helps you know keep them contending right now, and it might give them some firepower for when they play the Warriors in the finals. For the Celtics, they finally get a franchise player that they can kind of build around because, you know, Isaiah Thomas had a great year last year, and he was just amazing the entire season. Obviously, top five MVP candidate. But Curry Irving's a clear upgrade over, over Isaiah Thomas just because of the size, and he's younger. He's on a better contract. Um, so, yeah, this is a great trade for both teams. I'm not really sure who exactly wins it. I think Cleveland kind of, win, kind of wins it here because Isaiah Thomas and Curry Irving, while I think Curry Irving is a better player, they're really not – that far of a difference, I think, in terms of overall ability and how much it'll impact the team. Obviously, Kyrie Irving's more closer to a superstar type of player. He isn't quite a superstar player quite yet. So Cleveland, I think they did a good job of making the best out of the situation because Kyrie Irving obviously did not want to be there. Yeah, for me, this is a really interesting trade. You know, you look at the swap of point guards for Kyrie Irving for Isaiah Thomas, and you look at their stats, and they've been pretty identical identical over the careers you know, obviously Isaiah Thomas you know all the fans loved him in Boston and you know last year he really became a national he really got in the spotlight he was known for king of the fourth quarter but I have to agree with you you know I think between those two Kyrie Irving is the better player he's younger he's a little bit more dynamic and there's less weaknesses in his game right and he's gonna continue to improve and develop you know, Isaiah Thomas, he's just a little bit older, and his height, you know, he's, he causes lots of problems on defense mm -hmm. because he's just not a good defender. And when you look at their passing ability, it's about the same. But what I'm looking at in this trade is me and you talked about it a lot last year after Cleveland lost the finals. Their rotational pieces were very one-dimensional. And when they get getting Jay Crowder from Boston – I think that's a really good pickup for him. He's one of the best 3 and D players in the league, and I think he's been a really good fit for Cleveland. Yeah, I agree. And whether he's coming off the bench or starting for them, I think he's going to probably come off the bench for the Cleveland Cavaliers this season. But he's also on a very good contract as well, which is really needed for the Cleveland Cavaliers because they have one of the worst cap salary cap situations in the NBA. I think they have the highest payroll for any team in the NBA right now. So, again, that contract in their helps, and – you know, I can't stress enough the contract when it comes to these point guards and dealing with these guys because Isaiah Thomas is in the last year of his contract, and he's looking to get a max extension for next year. Um, Kyrie Irving's got two more years left on his deal with the player option, which he's probably going to opt out of to get a max contract. But he's done a pretty good deal for the Boston Celtics where they just signed Gordon Hayward and Al Horford to max contracts on um, the last two seasons. So that really helps them out, I think, here. And, you know, Jay Crowder, he gives them some toughness. He can guard multiple positions for them, uh, pretty much two through four for them, basically. And it just gives them a lot more depth on that team, which they sorely needed, I think, going into this season to kind of match up against the Warriors. Doesn't get the, them there yet, I don't think, because, you know, the Warriors are just still so dynamic offensively. And they have so much depth, but it, it gets them a little bit closer, I think. Yeah, I think this is a big improvement for the bench. And also, you know, they ended up getting that really big 2018 first-round pick from Brooklyn. You know, there's been lots of talks about what's, what's LeBron James going to do after the season. You know, there have been talks about him joining Lonzo in L.A. and getting this really high pick. You know, it kind of helps him in case LeBron does decide to leave. And it's just going to add more young talent to this team. 
and the fact that they're get, able to get another second round pick, you know, because of Isaiah Thomas's hip injury, you know, they're adding assets. That's a really good move for them. And in my opinion, I think Cleveland won this trade. For me, it depends on how healthy Isaiah Thomas is because you know, obviously Boston wouldn't make this deal. They didn't feel that Isaiah Thomas, there wasn't something a little bit wrong there. And I've been hearing rumors out there that he might not even play until halfway through the season for the Cleveland Cavaliers this season. So, I mean, the, the hip injury thing could really be a damper on this. I mean, we talked about getting that extra second round pick in there. I mean, it's a 2020 second round pick from the Miami Heat who are always competitive every single year. So I'm not sure how much value that has in this trade. It was kind of like Boston's like, all right, you want something else for a deal? Here, just take this. We don't really, we don't really care. To get, uh, honestly. So I don't know. I mean, it's interesting um, to think about because, I mean, if, if Isaiah Thomas can't be as explosive as he was last year, I mean, this gives a, the advantage clearly to the Celtics because they got a younger, healthier and, you know, more durable player at this point. Yeah, and I also want to add at the moment, too, I think it's going to be really interesting because you look at Boston's squad last year, they had Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, he's gone. They had Avery Bradley, he's gone. Jay Crowder, gone. That's three of your starting five, all not on this team this year. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how these new guys and Gordon Hayward, Marcus Morris, and Kyrie all gel together. It'll be interesting to see how Boston starts off the year. Yeah, I think there's going to be some chemistry problems, obviously, um, at the beginning of the season, like it always is when you get these, like, sort of super teams or just bringing a bunch of new guys in there. But I think we, we went down those positions right there. I think besides maybe losing Avery Bradley, I think the Boston Celtics improved at every single one of the positions for the guys that they lost. We look at Isaiah Thomas losing him. Well, they upgrade with Kyrie Irving. They lost – uh, Crowder to, in this trade as well. Well, they upgrade with Gordon Hayward, and they also drafted, drafted Jason Tatum, and then they get Marcus Morris in there as well. So they really did a good job of upgrading the roster, and you can even make the argument that Marcus Smart kind of fill in for Avery Bradley, kind of playing that similar role that he had for them last year. So really, I think they did a really good job of really, you know, getting better at each of those positions and still being able to set themselves up for the future still. Yeah, I just think it's really interesting because I think team chemistry is really important. Right. And, you know, they say you want to build a core to build around and they can play with each other and get used to it. I think overall in the long haul, they got better at each position, like you said. I think in the beginning of the season, it'll take some time to adjust, but it's going to be interesting. But I want to move on to another segment. Um, you know, a lot of people have been talking about this. And, you know, last year Isaiah Thomas, he played the day after his sister the day after his sister died it was very emotional and you know there's lots of talks about the business side of the NBA and how players like KD who mm -hmm. chose to leave OKC and then you got organizations like Boston trading away a guy that you would think to be like the key guy of the franchise and you see fans are angry about it you know what's your opinion about this yeah it's really tough I mean I think a lot of it has to go with the injury thing with Isaiah Thomas and obviously no one could have predicted that Kyrie Irving was going to make himself available to be traded um this offseason um so that's another factor I don't think I think Danny Ainge the GM of the Boston Celtics was content with keeping Isaiah Thomas for another year but when you get the chance to get a you know a future franchise builder the guy that you can build around like a Kyrie Irving I mean it's kind of hard not to take that chance especially when you're not really sure whether you know Isaiah Thomas can be that same type of player that he was last year um, when it comes to that hip injury. So, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, these are just – these are, like you said, it's a business. Um, you know, this is the business side of the NBA that you kind of can't avoid sometimes. And, I mean, it, come, it just comes down to that bottom line of, you know, are we trying to get our team better for this next season and going forward? I think that's what the Boston Celtics saw here. Obviously, I think everyone in that organization, that fan base, appreciates what Isaiah Thomas did for them over the past few seasons. But I think, you know, this move is kind of necessary to kind of get them to the next process of their, uh, of their organization. Yeah, you know, they're trying to compete with Cleveland and Warriors, you know, the top three teams. So, you know, like you said, it's a business move. It's tough. But I got to ask you one last question. So straight up after this deal, who do you think is the better team? Well, Cleveland's still the better team for this upcoming season after this deal, like we said, the Celtics still deal with some chemistry issues. I mean, the 
Cleveland's going to have some chemistry issues to go through as well. And Isaiah Thomas might not be able to play for the majority of the season. We're really not really sure where he is, where his injury is at. Mm-hmm. But I think Cleveland's still a better team. They have the best player in LeBron James, obviously, still. They still have Kevin Love there, Tristan Thompson. You know, everyone's still there. They even have a Derrick Rose off the bench kind of fill in for Isaiah Thomas while he's getting healthy. So I think they're set up pretty well for this next coming season. It's going to take the Celtics a bit of time to kind of get used to each other, I think. But I think over the long haul, I think the Celtics won this deal because they're still set up with multiple first-round picks and upcoming drafts. And when we mentioned on the Brooklyn pick, it's going to be a high pick. Looking at the Eastern Conference, I'm not really too sure about that because you have so many teams like Chicago, Indiana, Atlanta, all these teams that are purposely trying to tank this next upcoming season. Um, the Eastern Conference is really bad right now. And Brooklyn might actually move up a few slots if you think about it um, because they've been trying to get, add more of a competitive team because they don't have a first-round pick to tank, to tank for so it'll be really interesting to see how that kind of plays out throughout the season. Yeah, I think Brooklyn's still going to be bad. I still think it's going to be a top five pick. You know, that is interesting to think about. In my opinion, I think Boston is now the better team. You know, it's really hard to bet against LeBron, but I think, you know, adding Gordon Hayward, adding Kyrie Irving, you know, I think at the end of the regular season, my prediction, I think the Boston's going to take the number one seed, mainly because, you know, you don't know when Isaiah's going to return. And I know it's just the regular season. So in the playoffs, you know, if both teams are fully healthy, it's going to be really close. I think later in the season, Boston will become more gelled, the better team chemistry. And I can see this being the year that Cleveland does not make it to the NBA Finals. Yeah, I think the Celtics definitely got a lot better with all the moves that they've made in this offseason. I mean, the, the, the gap is definitely closer. We're not going to see an Eastern Conference Finals like last year, where it was basically just a blowout after blowout after blowout for Cleveland. I think it's going to be a much more competitive series. I just don't think the Celtics have done enough for this season to be better than the Cleveland Cavaliers, especially when they're all both healthy and at full strength and all gelled up together. Because, um, again, it's tough to bet against LeBron. But going forward for the next five to ten years, I think the Celtics, you know, they had the chance to really dominate the Eastern Conference going forward because there's really no other team out there, maybe besides the Milwaukee Bucks and what they're building, the Philadelphia 76ers, that really contended on going long-term success. Austin's in a great position right now. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's our thoughts on the Isaiah Thomas, Kyrie Irving trade. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. It was a crazy NBA-moving trade, and it's going to be a really fun NBA season to watch. They get to play each other in the first game. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching.